Hello everyone, uh, my name is Gül Akçuk and I'm a PhD candidate at TU Delft in the Department of uh, Architecture. And uh, I'm also a visiting fellow in the Arctic Institute. Um, and I've been working on uh, the impacts of climate change on the rural built heritage um, and as part of my PhD studies. Uh, today, I will give you a presentation about the unjust burden of climate crisis in vernacular heritage sites, um, which uh, is part of uh, Scottish Civic Trust's lecture series on heritage equity and a climate crisis. But um, first, I would like to introduce you to some of the work I have been doing in support to the, this presentation. So uh, I've been uh, working on the impacts of climate change on the vernacular heritage specifically, um, and it's in the case of Fundukli in Rize in Turkey. Uh, and I first uh, wrote about the intangible heritage of wooden artisanship in the region, in the city of Rize, uh, based on the interviews uh, with locals. And uh, with in collaboration with uh, other researchers, I wrote about uh, intangible uh, cultural heritage in benefit to uh, climate displaced and host communities. Um, also, uh, barriers to building climate resilience in cultural landscapes. Uh, and with my colleague uh, Stefan Hauser, uh, we mapped the vernacular heritage sites in disaster prone areas by using ArcGIS. Um, and uh, currently I've been, I'm working on a research paper in collaboration with uh, Hannah Flack uh, from Historic England. Uh, which is currently under publication process. And in my uh, talk today, I will present uh, some of the findings building on these works. And uh, if you wanna uh, find out more about these works, you can uh, find them online. Uh, the term of vernacular architecture has been associated with resilience, climate, and culture. Um, the, uh, then the term expanded to vernacular landscapes by recognizing the fountains, bridges, mills, uh, natural heritage and intangible heritage uh, forms of uh, vernacular expressions. Uh, surrounding the vernacular buildings and settlements and UNESCO Charter on Vernacular uh, Built Heritage in 1999 um, uh, used the term of uh, vernacular heritage and this uh, started to appear in the studies uh, starting from 2008 and uh, this uh, this uh, charter recognized the significance of vernacular uh, built heritage and uh, uh, vernacular, the vernacular settlements were actually built in a specific uh, physical, social, economic and uh, cultural conditions by local people relying on the um, techniques that previous generations uh, passed down. Uh, the building decisions behind these uh, settlements are not were never uh, coincidental or arbitrary. Climate knowledge is embedded in vernacular settlements and uh, lifestyles, along with other uh, determinants such as environmental, cultural, and societal. Um, vernacular built heritage globally uh, may be considered resilient and uh, sustainable in most cases. However, its uh, historical value, integrity, uh, significance can be adversely affected by the exposure to changing uh, extreme climate conditions, particularly maladaptation, loss of heritage, and traditional knowledge are among such deteriorations. And uh, another implication of these events can be climate migration with increasing displacements in, uh, of uh, agricultural driven communities from rural to urban areas. And um, 
rural populations, particularly in mountain valleys, are already uh, susceptible to slow onset uh, events like desertification, land and uh, degradation, forest degradation, increasing temperatures, crop failures, and uh, threats on livestock and abandonment. Despite all these challenges that vernacular settlements face in the climate crisis, it is the least mentioned um, form of cult cultural heritage <clears throat> in climate and heritage uh, studies. Climate change um, often deals with broader scales, national, regional, and urban scales, um, while heritage sites, particularly vernacular heritage, studies focus on building scales and aside from the scale gap the documentation of uh, vernacular heritage sites are uh, is often insufficient to address these challenges of climate change this is why i conducted interviews with locals to better understand the vernacular heritage sites under uh, threat so I studied the case of Fundigli in the city of uh, Rize, which is located in the northeast part of Turkey, uh, due to two reasons. Um, the first uh, one is the area receives the highest humidity and precipitation and um, experiences extreme rainfalls, flooding, and uh, landslides. Second, uh, the city um, and the district is rich with uh, cultural and natural heritage sites. Fundig has 31 villages and uh, neighborhoods in which uh, many settlements are um, uh, scattered and sparse in the hinterland. Uh, Fundig has uh, river plains and valleys uh, that were for formed by um, main three rivers from west to east, uh, Arla, Chalayan, and Sumer. And the spots that you see in the map shows the areas where I conducted the interviews with locals uh, in the district. Due to uh, steep terrains and uh, narrow strip coastline, arable lands are quite limited in the uh, area and the local economy uh, of the district of Fundigli primarily relies on the tea and hazelnut cultivation, fruit farming and uh, fisheries, uh, beekeeping and livestock cultivation. There are many tea uh, factories in the city of Rize and um, while in Fundigli tea cultivation, cultivated tea is cultivated by a small land holders and uh, among all the agricultural uh, activities, the tea plantation has become the uh, most important economic income for the um, as the city for the area as the city meets the tea demand in the country. Uh, Fundigli in Rize is rich with vernacular built heritage such as mosques, uh, stone bridges, and uh, traditionally stone, uh, traditionally built stone and built timber houses, mills, barns, kilns, archaeological sites, natural heritage sites such as waterfalls, plateaus, and forests, um, and intangible heritage uh, such as timber, timber artisanship, stone masonry, copper smithing, uh, basket made, making, um, weaving, and cornbread making, in addition to other representation of uh, food culture. The builders uh, chose local materials uh, such as stone from nearby uh, rivers and um, chestnut timber from the uh, forests to, uh, that could withstand the uh, uh, rainfall water and extreme uh, humidity to build these houses with uh, modular design. And uh, vernacular heritage, uh, vernacular houses are often uh, equipped with necessary tools to be resilient to the uh, surrounding with the specific construction detailing of these buildings. Vernacular houses are even though uh, survived approximately 250 years, are particularly vulnerable to changing climate along with other pressures such as economic uh, developments in the hinterland, decline in rural population, and abandonment. The, this uh, 
study primarily um, relies on the, uh, the interviews conducted with local people and on-site uh, observations, uh, notes undertaken during January and uh, July 2019. I conducted first field work on the selected case area uh, for a week in January 2019, while a second case visit um, was carried out for two weeks in July 2019. In total, 16 unstructured interviews were conducted face-to-face -face with uh, 14 people from four different uh, villages and one from the administrative center of the district. Uh, In-depth interviews were carried out using snowball sampling technique and all interviews were audio recorded and video recorded, transcribed and translated from Turkish to English, keeping the meaning of the local terms. Uh, interviews revealed a lot of information on the past uh, traditional knowledge, current problems of uh, flooding, landslide, and rainfalls, in addition to climate resilient features of vernacular um, heritage. Uh, according to the statements of locals in the past, um, the vernacular buildings uh, were built on the higher end of the cornfields so that the rainwater carried the uh, scat of the animals down to slop to fertilize the land. And the reason behind uh, this settlement pattern is to uh, is the close proximity to water sources, um, exposure to solar radiation in the morning, and manage their lands, farmlands, and to face the um, beautiful uh, landscape. Uh, dealing with microclimate, local uh, communities were self-reliant in the selection of building sites. Uh, regarding the past settlements, locals addressed um, <clears throat> that uh, Fundukle was a swamp, and uh, locals mainly did not settle in the city center due to these reasons of uh, the area, that the area was a swamp and the um, issue of the mosquitoes. Um, according to a folk story, a uh, location of a house used to be determined after hanging a meat in the selected site for three uh, months in the past. So the wooden part of the building uh, the, the rotten part of the meat signaled uh, the area received a uh, high uh, precipitation and humidity, which could deteriorate the timber. Uh, this is why this area would not be considered as uh, suitable for construction site. In the past, there was no uh, need to construct a retaining wall uh, behind the houses as the walking path behind the building did not exceed uh, one and a half meter. The snow cover were used to increase the load uh, on the roofs in the past, and the uh, locals would uh, carry clear the roofs from the snow weight, uh, which was relatively higher compared to today's weather conditions. Uh, villagers uh, used to they, they um, mentioned that uh, the 1.5 to 2 meters high snow would cover the village and the villagers would help each other out to shovel the uh, snow on the roofs um, to with the help of uh, stairs. Today, uh, homeowners descended from local uh, craftspeople restore the, uh, their houses um, and uh, with their own knowledge and some of these renovated buildings uh, have concrete extensions which keep the humidity inside uh, and particularly in winter season the uh, this part of the house uh, becomes uh, highly um, humid and uh, observations from the locals reveal that the concrete uh, extensions do not provide the climate proof uh, climate comfort uh, of the original part of the building um, more than half of the interviewees mentioned the flooding landslides and extreme rainfalls as major challenges induced by climate change whereas remaining linked to the events 
uh, from human interventions and natural disasters. The locals mentioned flooding in 2016 was the most serious one and the damage in the Beidere village was particularly severe. They revealed that Chalian River was similarly flooded and the road to the villages were, um, were uh, closed. And uh, in the first visit to the fields, locals uh, repeated uh, that Beidere village was a landslide zone, but the observations on the second case uh, trip revealed that even though the Chalian village had relatively a low risk, now carries a higher risk to the river flooding. Today, there is flood defense constructed by the hydraulic works along the river of Chalian, although the area was relatively safer in comparison to the other villages. According to one historic homeowner, the land uh, facing rear facade eroded twice. Uh, a very big storage house was drifted during the flood. There are very, uh, there are few uh, storage houses that were um, lost as such. And some of the buildings in uh, Aslan and Beidere villages were damaged by this flooding. Beidere village in more uh, elevated topography concurrently appeared in the mentions of locals as the most affected uh, area by the floods and landslides a disaster region due to the frequency of these events. There are very um, rare uh, examples of uh, original hist uh, historic buildings in this village. And while the remaining ones um, are extensively modified, the following statements on Beikere village, Karali village was also mentioned as a landslide zone where historic buildings were damaged. However, even though most of the houses survived disasters, the rear facades of the, some of these houses have become degraded uh, due to landslides, particularly in the case of a, a house, um, the main door faces the rear facade where the um, landslides damaged the most. Um, the, uh, most of the buildings are not oriented towards the, oriented facing the um, slope where the landslide posed a risk. However, um, this particular house uh, was an exception as this building was rebuilt with the remainings of uh, uh, remaining materials of a historic building, which was burned down by bombs and uh, Russian invasion in the region uh, from 1916 to 1918. Afterwards, uh, the successive generations lost the uh, traditional knowledge of uh, this building uh, built 2050 years ago. Uh, and the differences in generational construction practices present the future threats on uh, local construction knowledge and experience with local environments because they forgot the um, this uh, traditional knowledge on uh, the building orientation. They built the main door facing the, this slope, which, uh, uh, which was damaged by the landslide. The local term of uh, rotten month is mentioned for the month of uh, July, uh, when the area receives the highest precipitation and uh, rain rainwater and the the area would be damp and the dampness uh, changes in the temperature also causes crop failures as part of this integrated historic environment locals noted that uh, peers do not grow similarly cherries used to grow in the past but only very few uh, are growing now, and uh, although some of the locals emphasize the effects of chemical fertilizers and the construction of dams as external factors, they could not deny the uh, effects of changing climate. Now the fruits do not mature enough and fall from the trees earlier. The house on the right top uh, degraded due to the rainfalls as the roof eaves of this construction could not cover the facade from the uh, rainwaters. 
and the roof is uh, usually extend uh, to 150 centimeter in Chalayan village, but this house located in Hara village with less than 100 centimeter received rainwater, which led to the decay of the facade uh, in the of the upper floor. The locals emphasized the damage uh, of extreme rainfalls on the historic buildings that are abandoned. So if the building is neglected by the homeowner, a drop of water can destroy the whole building. Even though some of these buildings were renovated, they decay, decay again due to these uh, issues. And together with the opening of the roads to ve vehicles um, between the houses and the slopes, villagers also um, clear the slopes uh, either for tea plantation or uh, through deforestation or parking of personal vehicles, as can be seen on the uh, left image below. With this uh, also led to an increase in the landslides risks. The construction technique called uh, Chekatura, uh, which is the plastering of the facade of the first floor, uh, as you can see in the right image, is found to be particularly vulnerable to rainwaters and uh, it decays faster. And when the building is neglected by the owner, uh, the rainfall uh, can uh, destroy the building and the eaves of the historic buildings extend um, uh, wide enough to keep the facade secure from the precipitation and the rainfalls. And the local roof tiling, uh, known as Ottoman tiles, make a resilient roof covering. The major difficulty is to renovate the roofs of these buildings uh, as it costs uh, more money. People build near their new buildings along river for, uh, for river fronts, uh, which made them vulnerable to floods. Um, vernacular landscapes are transforming constantly with the increasing effects of urbanization and climate change and changing water patterns are causing the rapid deterioration of vernacular buildings by causing loss of material and integrity of the structures. They are also causing the erasing of the cultures around, around them. The, Ministry of uh, Environment and Urban Planning in Turkey announced the Regional Climate Action Plan, which um, uh, for the uh, Black Sea region in uh, 12 July uh, in 2019. The 15 action uh, to be uh, taken in the region includes several practices in building sector. Um, the most relevant to cultural heritage is that the 13th article on encouraging the use of local mat materials in the construction for climate resiliency. One impl uh, implication of such a uh, decision is uh, the use of um, encouragement in the use of local materials and techniques and uh, the legal exemption from any types of fees or taxes in construction of uh, uh, these houses. There are um, fundamental issues in um, overcoming the barriers and challenges on the way to safeguarding vernacular heritage the data on the geographical locations or, and historical background, past and present images of these buildings uh, are not correctly, precisely documented and uh, preservation and future development require careful identification uh, of present and expected hazards. Heritage value of vernacular sites should be reassessed and prioritize the significant elements in times of climate crisis. Finding uh, such materials um, on the uh, past and present uh, conditions of these buildings require uh, studies beyond traditional archives. Uh, so the oral transmission of knowledge can 
provide a better insight in the use of techniques and materials of these buildings. Um, historical, historical building techniques and materials have long withstood disasters and they can inspire future construction. In addition, there is a need for uh, creating awareness about cultural heritage in the context of uh, disaster management. Um, uh, and um, uh, this, especially among various stakeholders, including local communities, for example, in Fundukle workshops such as EU funded project training masters for rural built heritage in the Eastern Black Sea region have provided education in carpentry to local artisans. The, uh, this uh, this uh, actually increased the uh, 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 awareness, local awareness about the importance of the historic buildings. And as a result, they opened their buildings to tourism, which led to an additional income for them. And um, as the uh, governmental institutions have uh, insufficient funding for the preservation of vernacular heritage, uh, the there is a need for this promotion of this type of heritage, especially uh, in facing contemporary challenge of climate crisis. We need to reevaluate our un understanding of climate resiliency in the context of vernacular heritage sites. Thank you for listening.